if VMS deposit is located at the northern end of this large non-cylindrical dome called the Malev Putin Sevskaya anticline. It's located here and it's plunging towards the northwest. The main northerly plunge of this dome is right here and that plunges towards the north northwest so there is a bit of a divergence in plunge here uh, due to non-cylindrical folding. There are two other large VMS deposits Zeranovs, which is located here, and uh, Grekov deposit, which is located here, and they both plunge in the local antiformal hinge. They're located in antiformal hinges, and they all plunge in the same direction. Uh, this towards the uh, west northwest direction and south southeast in this locality here. So these are the three large deposits in this dome. And there are other smaller deposits along here, but you'll notice that all of them are located within this large non-cylindrical dome. Uh, this map here is this area here, just in this area here. And um, if you take a cross section through this area here, this is what it looks like. That's the cross section. And you can see that um, these are various names that basically this is the, overall this is the Malive uh, deposit and this blue area here that's the mineralization and um, it's hosted in basically folded volcanic rocks these are all the drill holes and I'm going to show you a section across here um, showing a cross section of, of this particular fold and uh, the Malive deposit on the western limb of this large uh, plunging anti-formal dome. This is the cross-section of the northern end of the dome here and uh, this is the the zinc values and this is the Malib deposit on the western side on the western limb of this large antiform and uh, these hinges plunge in different directions. Malive is plunging towards the northwest. So I'll just slice through the sec these sections here and this is what it looks like. The bedding model was generated from interpreting the bedding from the lithological data and um, form surfaces were interpolated. The next image I'm going to rotate to is a down plunge view of the Malive deposits itself. So I'm going to rotate this view looking towards the northwest. This is what the Malive deposit looks like in cross section. Um, the drill holes are showing the lithology, and you can see layering which you can actually interpret as bedding and this is what's been in, interpreted here so these wavy surfaces are uh, the folds i'll just take off the lithological data these wireframes were digitized by mine geologists and you can clearly see that they the way they've modeled you can actually see the uh, the, the folding in the ore itself you can see this as we slice down plunge, we're looking towards 311 at an uh, angle of 26 degrees. So this is what it looks like. We're slicing down plunge again, the all Y frame in red. and the lithological data in the drill hole in various colors. Now we're looking at the uh, zinc values, the high zinc values here, along with the red all Y frame. And these are the local fold axes 
and their interpolated trajectories in 3D that I've modelled from. First interpreting the fold hinges and their locations from the Y-frame, the all Y-frame, as well as the, the grade distribution. And we're rotating away from that cross-sectional view to looking at the grade from above. And you'll start to see that these arrows, you can see that they go right across and they don't, the grades don't actually continue along these fold axes trajectories. And you can see that there are straight boundaries that you can see that you can draw that appear to truncate the grade distribution. And we're going to rotate towards looking along the strike line of these discontinuities that, that I've digitized from the grade distribution. In this strike line view of the discontinuities that I've drawn, these grey planes, you can actually see that they are basically defining a drop off in the grade. The overall grade is actually not displaced, it's actually continuous along the fold axes which are indicated by these, uh, these polylines. So looking at it from down from the top, you can actually see that the folds run along here, continue, but the grades themselves, uh, they just stop suddenly at particular locations. And you can actually see this one running along here and that stops the grade here. There are other planar boundaries. I believe there's something running through here that's, uh, that I have not yet digitized. Uh, so all these grades that are running parallel to the fold axes are in places just simply truncated by these discontinuities. And these discontinuities are planar, so they have to be, have to have formed after the folding, or at least it's either after or during the folding process. So th these are the zinc values, but the lead and the copper values show the same thing. You can see looking along now, and there are definite grade disruptions along these planar discontinuities that I've drawn. And these grades are not displaced along these discontinuities. They seem to be just truncated by them. So you can't explain the grade distribution, this truncated grade distribution based on displacements along a later fault. These are definitely discontinuities of grade. We're going to go back looking down plunge now. This is looking down plunge again. Zinc values. And then we're going to look at the main plunge of the dome. And then we go back to the plan view once again. 